Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent in Canterbury and in this clip I want to discuss with you the concept of a zero-order reaction. Now these reactions are not uncommon uh, when we, for example, look at enzyme reactions. So, for example, if the substrate concentration is very high in an enzyme reaction, then we usually have to deal with something that's very similar to a zero-order reaction. Or we can also have reactions related to uh, drug metabolism that, for the, uh, that, that um, show uh, first a zero-order reaction. So what does it look like? Let's say we have a reaction with a reactant where we have A. This is our reactant and it reacts to something. It is consumed. And we can say for the consumption of this reactant, we can write a general rate equation where we say the change in the concentration of A uh, per time unit equals, because this reactant is consumed, it is negative, so minus k, and this is a rate constant, so rate constant, times the concentration of A. Because it is a zero-order reaction, our rate order, that is the exponent, would be zero. So this, this here is the rate order. And obviously for a zero order reaction it would be zero. Now we can, of course, we can write anything to the power of zero as one. So we can rewrite this rate equation as dA over dt equals minus k times one. And we usually wouldn't write this times one. So what do we do with this um, differential equation? Well, first of all, what we do with differential equations is that we um, separate the variables. So we just simply bring this dt to the other side, and we have dA equals minus k times dt. And we can solve this uh, differential equation by just simply integrating both sides of the equation. So we just simply integrate that and we get this. And what we are actually looking for is, let's say, uh, integration when our t is uh, sort of zero. That is the start of the, of the, of the observation. Uh, and we go to a time t whenever we want to stop the observation. So we uh, basically have to find a solution for this and uh, in, in this particular case it's very simple. We can write the concentration of A at the time t that uh, we observe minus the concentration at the very beginning of the reaction equals minus k times t at the time of the observation minus t at the starting time. So this here is concentration of A. When we observe, so observe, here that is our concentration of A at the beginning of the reaction. This here is our rate constant. This is the time when we look at the reaction, time of observation. Observation, and this is our starting time, or the time at the beginning. Starting time. 
So what does this actually mean? Well, uh, let me give you an example. Let's say we have a jar with sweets in it. So lots of sweets. And let's say we have a hundred of these sweets. Now this would be our starting concentration, so this is the same as a node. And I pretend that I can eat can eat five sweets per minute. I probably feel then terribly sick. So the question is, for example, how many sweets many sweets are left are left after let's say seven minutes and that is exactly what this equation allows me to calculate now in this particular case it's very simple um, and uh, we can easily uh, do this calculation in our head, but formally, let me show you how this is done. So these five sweets per minute, that would be our rate constant here. And note, this rate constant has this sweets per minute. That's the unit for a zero-order reaction. Now, how can I do that? Well, I can say, I have my 80, that would be the concentration, or that would be amount of sweet that I have at the time when I observe it after seven minutes. My A0, my starting concentration is 100 sweets, my K equals five sweets per minute, my starting time, T0, that is basically when I start doing things, so that would be probably zero minutes. And my final time, when I observe it, this would be seven minutes. So when I now ask how many sweets are left after these seven minutes, all I need to do is rearrange this equation here uh, so that I've got my AT. So how many sweets are left? And this equals, I bring this to the side with a plus, so I have A0 minus K times T at the time of observation minus the starting time. And all I need to do now is uh, put in these numbers. So we said we had 100 sweets at the beginning minus, and I said I can eat 5 sweets per minute, 5 sweets per minute times, and I wanted 7 minutes, that's my time of the observation, 7 minutes minus, and that's the start time, that would be 0 minutes. So, this is very easy to solve, and this gives me A T equals 100 minus 5 times 7, so that would be 35. The minutes cancel out, and I would have, at the end, 65 sweets left because I've got I've eaten already 35 sweets so with this equation here I can very easily calculate how many sweets I've got left however there is a slight problem because if we for example ask how many sweets are left how many sweets are left after 30 minutes. We'll run into a slight problem. Can you see that problem? So we said 
a zero or, or at the time zero is hundred sweets k equals five sweets per minute tt equals 30 minutes and t0 equals zero minutes now let's try to figure out what is our at after 30 minutes so at equals 100 it's this one here 100 sweets minus five sweets per minute times 30 minutes minus zero minutes and what we get is 100 sweets minus five times 30 minus 150 sweets so that would give us negative 50 sweets but of course we can't have negative sweets would be sours perhaps but it, we can't have negative sweets so we need to put in a restriction and we can uh, use this equation only as long as 80 is uh, a positive is a positive number so we can say this equation applies only if 80 is larger or the same as 0. What happens if 80 becomes smaller than 0? So if 80 is smaller than 0, we have to say this equation is no longer uh, valid and we should say a t then is zero. So I probably should write this properly. If a t is larger or the same as zero, then we can use this equation and if we would get a result where a t is smaller than zero, then we have to say a t is zero. Now, how can we represent a zero order uh, reaction graphically? Well, all we need to do is really write down this, this equation again. So a t equals a zero minus k times t at the time of the observation minus t zero. And we very often, well, I write it down, but very often we set this as zero. So our equation becomes a t equals a zero minus k times t t and if we look at it this is the equation of a straight line y equals c minus m x it's just uh, written in a slightly different form so how would that look like well if we plot on the x-axis we plot time and on the y-axis we plot our concentration of A, we would find, so this would be here at the uh, start of our observation, we would find this point here, that would be our concentration at the time point zero, and it would go down like that. And of course it can't get negative, so it would stay uh, zero, and that is what we just uh, said, it would stay zero when it reaches zero. So this point here is our starting point, and the gradient, so the gradient of this, gradient equals negative 
k. That is our rate constant. Uh, one word about a rate constant. A rate constant itself. So rate constant can always only be positive. What we see here, okay, we've got a negative sign here, but because the rate constant is always positive, uh, we have this uh, line going in this direction. So the, the straight line goes down here. So the important things that you really need to remember about a zero-order reaction is this equation here. AT equals starting concentration minus K times T. And you need to remember that you can represent this uh, zero-order reaction as a graph like that, where you plot the concentration of A versus the time, and it gives you a straight line. So I hope this makes sense, and I will show you in the next video how we can apply this zero-order reaction um, uh, to certain examples. Thank you very much for watching.